I always love the adventure of travelling away, especially if it's to a new water. And Jertsin Lake in Poland was a new one for us. Around about 100 acres, it's quite a big one. It hasn't been a fishery for that long, about seven years, but the lake has some real history to it. It was gouged out by the glaciers probably thousands of years ago. And so it's a mature water, but new as a carp fishery. And we were looking forward to having a go. We had six days ahead of us, but when we arrived there was a competition still taking place that had one night to go. So we couldn't fish that night, but we was made more than welcome by everyone. And in actual fact it was good to meet all the guys fishing in the competition and uh, yeah, we even got roped into presenting some of the prizes. But yeah, lovely guys, good to meet them. And good to get a bit of info about the lake. Once everyone was gone, the lake took on a totally different feel. We had almost 100 acres of water all to ourselves and it was so peaceful and quiet, just bird song filling the air, lovely warm breeze coming across the lake and we were so looking forward to getting set up. We'd been saved a really nice swim, in actual fact it was an island, swim number 44A, which came with its own cabin so we didn't need bivvies or bed chairs they were already in situation. So it was easy enough just to turn up and get the rods out. <laughs> Even getting to the swim was made easier with the help of everyone, led by Thomas, the main guardian of the lake. Well, this jet is the obvious place to fish from, although it's a little bit further from the, the cabin. The cabin's over there, and the jet is here. There's a couple of nice spots in front of the, the cabin, but um, yeah, this platform covers the bay a, a lot better. I mean, some nice carpy looking bits in the reeds there. And I've seen there's an orange boy over there that's like the the boundary marker but I've seen a couple of fish show next to that so that's certainly worth a rod. Boats are good, I mean it's a big boat but um, yeah nice sturdy boat. I mean they they do look after you so well here, I mean the stuff that they've got and what they do, the food they supply is amazing, they're <coughs> such nice people. Right, let's get this one out there. Yeah, it's only when you actually get up close to these reeds you start seeing all the little nooks and crannies and channels. I mean, look at that, some lovely little channels actually in behind the reeds here. And, uh, yeah, they're all perfect places, aren't they? So I'm going to drop one. Just, yeah, see the reeds bashing about there. There's fish here. Mind you, I think there's a lot of fish in here other than carp. Yeah, I think some of those reeds are actually floating, moving around. But, but anyway, it's about five or six foot just about here, just off the reeds. See, there's a nice depth there. So yeah, I'm just gonna drop it sort of in around this corner. It's quite firm, 
fairly well it looks clean so okay just somewhere in around here I don't want to put it right in the reeds for the obvious reasons it might get a take but if, if it goes off it's just gonna be snags huh Yeah, see I think all of that there, that's all just floating and drifting around. So the carp can, nice little grass snake there, I wonder. Getting close and seeing. So the carp can get in all underneath it, looks brilliant for them. Some bathing there, can you see him? <laughs> Well, it's only a little baby one, but uh, I haven't weighed it. It's probably 10, 12 pound or something, but um, gave a good run anyway, didn't it? But <laughs> lively little things, God. Yeah, there's plenty of fish out there in the reeds. I hope some are gonna be a bit bigger than this one. There's a lot of fish in the lake and they do, the biggest is, is up around sort of 50, but I'm guessing, Quite a few of them are smaller, but um, yeah, let's hopefully see a few uh, bigger ones in the coming days. But we've we've made a start anyway, haven't we? There we go. Right, he can go back. That first common was actually followed soon after by another one of similar sizes, and I was just hoping that the bay wasn't full of that sort of size fish. I expected to be, you know, getting amongst some bigger fish as time went on. But in actual fact, the swim went pretty quiet for a few hours. After a, an initial burst of action, uh, I had to wait a little while and it was the evening before the next run come along. Well done. Cool. What a scrap. Cool, he weren't giving up, was he? <laughs> Blimey. God, my arms are aching. Oh, well, what a fight that was, wasn't it? Blimey. Had to be patient with him, but um, nice one, nice fatty one. 
first mirror and a good one. Lovely that, just over 37. Well pleased with that. But since this morning, when we had a, those couple of commons, it's been quiet. And uh, I thought, has the wind put them off or has it moved them? But yeah, as evening come, we just finished dinner and off it went with this one. So there we go, just had to be a little bit patient. After a couple of smaller ones, got the first good one. So that's great. Lovely. Mwah. Oh, he's a nice scaly one, 23 pounds. So a couple of 20 pound mirrors, well, in quick succession. Here we go, there's a group of nice fish out there anyway. So, well, a different spot this one, just down to the left, most have come off the, the platform out there. But um, yeah, not far out again, only little underarm flick actually, but a nice common, just over 25 pound. Nice dark one, this one. All right, busy morning, third fish this morning. Third 20 pounder. Right. Yeah, the fish were loving all the food and certainly loving the particles. I just found it easier to empty all the jars in a bucket and mix them all together make a nice little particle mix for them all to eat and uh, yeah, they were loving it. God, been plenty of trips in and out on the boat anyway. Here we go, ready for another one to go. It's just um, slip D as usual on a helicopter. A little bit soft out on the bottom there. So the heli helicopter just plonks down in the silt and uh, the rig sits nicely on top. 20 mil scope at squid wafter with a little bright topper. Slip D size five long shank twister. And that's about it, not, not a very heavy lead, only between three and four ounce lead, three ounce that is, uh, basically because it sort of plugs down in the silt a little bit and uh, just don't need anything heavier. Little nushy, like the stopper bead behind, which just comes off um, under pressure. So if I lose the rig or anything happens like that, that can just pop off. So it's nice and safe, makes a nice change not to be losing leads, you know, don't, on the lead clip system, you know, if it was weedy or snaggy, might choose that um, but it's not it's pretty clean out there so it's, it's nice just to plop the little lead down in the silt and uh, here we go that one's ready to go so I'm going to get it out there Lovely and hard there. It is a nice spot that. We were loving our time on the island, it was brilliant out there. 
lovely and peaceful, plenty of time to chill out. And for the first time this year, time to get the barbecue out as well. Next morning brought a change in conditions. There's a bank of rain moved in, but if anything, it just looked even more carpy. Well done. Yeah, another nice little mirror. I don't know, 17, 18 pound. I always love a summer storm, especially being able to watch it from the balcony of the cabin. It was just great. And uh, yeah, all of nature seemed to enjoy it as well. Yeah, another scaly one, uh, 26 and a half pounds, so not massive, but uh, in the whole scheme of things, quite a nice one. Well, not a big one, but certainly one of the, the scaly ones anyway. I know there was a few scaly ones in here, and uh, I've seen some bigger ones as well. But um, yeah, he's a pretty one, isn't he? There we go. He'll make a nice big one, won't he? Nice comet, it's been quiet, there's always a, a morning burst of action, then it goes quiet and then uh, just as we was about to light the barbie up for din dins, it's gone off with this one on the end, so there we go. God, it's been a hectic day, um, with a little brief quiet spell in between, so there we go. Well, three nights in, and they've just about eaten all the bait I took up with me. I thought I might have taken enough, um, but I didn't realise how hungry these fish are. <laughs> yeah, um, wasn't sure how it was going to be, but it's been a bit more action than uh, what I was expecting. So, yeah, but it's not far. Um, just where those reeds are there, we're only just around the corner there. And where those boats are back there, that's the base. So I've just been back to base and uh, yeah, a few more jars of the hemp and uh, seeds and a, a couple more bags Scopex squid we've got two nights left so um, you know that's going to be enough whatever yeah it's another nice swim there with a little cabin and uh, yeah it's not far from us actually next swim down I suppose that is about oh, probably 100 metres away. 
that um, that one you can actually drive straight from the road. I saw them at the weekend, they had their cars right beside the cabin there. But of course, being accessible means people are going to come down and see you, <laughs> which is why they gave us the cabin in the woods that's not accessible, which uh, fair play, that was nice of them to do that. But, you know, that's another very nice little swim. Originally, this rod was quite close to the orange boy there, and I had one a little bit deeper, and it was quite noticeable. I was getting action by the reeds there, but they were definitely smaller fish, and the last one I had there this morning was a, a little baby common. Um, so I thought, you know, the better fish were coming off of the reeds. So the one that was by the reeds, I've now uh, leapfrogged the other one into slightly deeper water and it's it's soft it's certainly deeper it's about four four and a half meters down there something like that so quite a bit deeper it's about one and a half to two meters by the reeds yeah like I say it's soft I mean it's not oh there's one there that was a little one a carp though I've ended up mixing the hemp and the small seed and the big seed mix all together in a bucket usual story plenty of that plenty of the scopic squid pellet and of course plenty of scopic squid boilies They're well on the munch, these fish. Don't take them long to get through that. 99% confident that that's going to get me a bite this evening. Ready for the next one. Yeah, and this one went 28 and a half. Lovely dark old mirror. Very Englishy looking. But yeah, cracker. From the deeper water and uh, yeah, you can just tell when there's a better one on the end, can't you? You were sort of chugging up and down a bit. Those little commons like bang on the end of the rod tip and you know it's a small one just shaking his head, but when they start plodding about a bit, it's always a better one. Lovely.
well last morning we're just starting to get our bits together now but um, of course there's no bivvy to pack down because we've got the the lovely cabin and bed supplied so it's gonna be a bit easier than normal but um, yeah one last fish to show you a lovely one lovely common if you let me they're a bit frantic as usual but yeah nice one 28 and a quarter I was on the little lone sort of close in rod down the, down the reeds again it's not produced many fish that rod but it has produced a few nice ones like this <laughs> oh they're so lively these fish but there we go it's a nice one to finish up with we've had over 30 fish now so it's been hectic action and uh yeah we've loved every minute of it it's a nice barbecue so we've sat out in the sun we've hidden away in the rain um but enjoyed all of it because i mean it's a cracking lake jerkson lake is definitely one for the future it's still quite a new lake but it's fantastic already it's only going to get better and we've really enjoyed it everyone's been really nice to us the the people here have been fantastic looked after us really well and uh yeah we'll be coming back to see them so for now that's it though we're getting back and yeah pack the rest of the gear up and head on our way but it's been lovely so thanks to everyone but there we go we'll see you next time Well, I thought it was over, but it wasn't quite. <laughs> oh, literally, just the rods left out. We're loading the boat, ready to get picked up. And uh, yeah, one's gone off. So it's, it's never over until the fat carp stops feeding. <laughs> and they're still feeding out there. And uh, yeah, absolute beauty. 35, 12, linear. What a lovely parting gift, eh? And the average size is going up, you know. The last few fish have been quite nice. There's still the odd little common in amongst them. But, um, yeah, they were getting better. So if we had more time, who knows what happened? might happen. But, um, you know, we've had five fantastic days. And if this is the last one, there's still a couple of rods to reel in yet. <laughs> um, but, yeah, happy days, eh? Fantastic. Well, that really was the last one that time, <laughs> but what a nice way to finish with a, a great fish like that. So all that was left was to make our way back to base and uh, load the van and say goodbye to all the new friends we'd made. And we'd made plenty on this trip. All lovely people who have been so kind to us, looked after us well, and uh, yeah, friends that will last forever. <laughs>